Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. I'm doing my June's Q&A video today and I'm sorry I've been MIA. I've been quite busy lately. I have some out of town guests, mainly my parents, but anyway, uh, let's get started with the first question and it is from Geraldine Vance. Has buying a watch and jewelry at your local H store, Hermes store, increase your bag offers. I believe you're also from Vancouver, so you're also from where I shop. I would think so, but I don't really have a benchmark or something to compare to. But I know that in general, jewelry watches ready to wear are some of the most preferred categories for um, people to shop in order to sort of get brownie points in order to get the quota bags. They're kind of expensive things, right? They have a very high mar margin profit and they don't really sell themselves in a way. And so I do think that in general, it makes sense because other than those things, everything else are very popular items even for people who are not after actual quota bags so i'm talking about their small leather goods their belts their costume jewelry even their scarves they're really popular even among people that are not after quota bags so they don't really need to try to sell you those things as for my own experience i do think that it helps for sure especially because those are very high ticketed items therefore it helps you achieve a high quota spend very quickly so i would say yes but i don't have a benchmark to compare to uh, other than it makes sense so the next question is by just right best and worst things about luxury shopping in vancouver hmm interesting so just right is also from vancouver best and worst things about shopping here i guess with the worst is that because we are in Canada and like, you know, Canada is a big, big country, but our population is very small in comparison to how much land we have. Uh, it Therefore, because of that reason, we don't have a lot of luxury stores. Like we don't have a lot of standalone stores. And even if we are lucky enough in Vancouver to have an actual MS store, an actual Chanel store, an actual... Cartier and Van Cleef, those those standalone stores, even though we do have one of each, which is already much better than some other provinces. And uh, I think the only other provinces that has a lot of luxury stores is Ontario. But at the same time, because the Canadian market is quite small in comparison to many other parts of the world, we don't get that many luxury stores. So access to stock and uh, even to certain limited editions or like seasonal stuff, they don't sometimes come to Canada. The stock also is a bit slower to arrive to Canadian um, stores. Therefore, that's the bad part, I suppose. Again, Ontario has the biggest population of all the provinces and territories in Canada. However, Vancouver has the most concentrated of very wealthy people and um, a lot of uh, very rich immigrants that like to come to Vancouver instead of more east because it's too cold in the east side of the country. Therefore, uh, we actually have a lot more competition. Our local competition is very, very high. So in order to get anything, you have to work twice as hard. Again, compared to even our neighbor province, which is Alberta, like we have more stores here and they are very close to each other, mainly in downtown area. So, you know, if you want luxury shopping, it's it's pretty much within the whole downtown area. And at least we have some stores because it's not the case for, again, all the other provinces in uh, in all of Canada, right? Aside from Ontario, a few in Montreal, a few in Calgary. I think we have pretty, we have it pretty good compared to the rest of Canada. So I guess that's the good part. I'd be curious of what you think as well. If you are a local, um, what do you think is the best and the worst here? I, I mean, I've lived over 10 years here, but to me, it's still sort of like, it's my hometown now, but it's still sort of like, I'm still finding out new things to and new places to go myself. Who is Pandora360? What do you think of Van Cleef Alhambra jewelry? Um, I like it. I think it's very cute. It's the clover leaf design, which is super classic and timeless. 
and I think as long as it suits you, I honestly think go for it. Is it a little bit common nowadays? Yes, but at the same time, I feel like it's mostly common just on social media and online. In real life, I hardly see people wear them unless you're always hanging out with a very wealthy group of people or just people that enjoy luxury in general. You don't really see them in the rest of the city, like in the regular you know, regular, as in regular places that we go to, and even in the rest of Canada, I, I mean, I see them here and there, it's just not super often, so I wouldn't say that they are too played out either, I think at the end of the day, it does not matter what others think, if you love it, go for it. As for myself, I really like their Sweet Alhambra line, the smallest motif, I also like the motif, uh, I think it's the vintage, the one up uh, from the suite because those two sizes are probably my preferred size. However, if I were to buy anything from that line, I think I would maybe go for their rings, I suppose, because I'm not sure about necklaces and I'm not sure about, again, the bracelets. They are usually a little too big for me and if I had to resize too much, then I don't know. Maybe the earrings too, um, but yeah. If I were to start somewhere, I, I would think I would go for something like a, a ring, earrings maybe, um, maybe necklace, but definitely not their bracelets because I'm really happy with um, just my bangles. So if I'm going to build um, more bracelets for myself, then I'll probably just continue with more bangles. Miles and Sid, when you started with your each journey, which is Hermes, how often do you visit your local boutique? So when I started, I visited for sure at least once a month and some months I would visit two or three times just because sometimes you go there and you end up buying a few things and you also maybe put a deposit for more things to come that haven't arrived yet and so you end up visiting a couple more times either to pick up the the items that have arrived your presence and your communication with your essay stays fresh in her mind like a month apart is not so long but it's also not so compacted in general if i go once a month i want to make you know big enough purchases that i'm not wasting my essays time but at the same time it you know, it's not going to be for little things unless it's just like a drop in and I, I'm not really taking up her whole one hour or half hour appointment. Once or twice in general, that's, uh, that's how much I've been visiting at the beginning and I would say it's probably similar even to, to this day. Also from Miles and Sid, I guess I didn't see the part that uh, it's like a two part question. How did you make yourself stand out so that your Hermes essay ultimately offered you a Birkin. So I guess she's still referring to the beginning of my journey. Um, honestly, just be yourself because you can't really pretend to be anything else anyway, just cause I mean, why would you? So I was just being myself. Of course, I also was very polite with my essay. Um, I was never pushy, but at the same time, you know, I did ask questions because when I was completely new, I had no idea how it worked here, but it's completely fine to ask questions. After two or three visits with my essay, I, you know, I definitely made it clear that I was interested in a bag and it would be my dream bag. I think what my essay told me at the time is that, you know, Birkins and Kelly's are pretty rare and you have to be sort of like an established customer, meaning that you just have to show that you love the brand. Like I, he didn't actually say with those words, but that's basically what they're saying, that you have to be uh, a loyal and constant customer, that you actually appreciate the brand. Um, and the way to do it is to, you know, buy things from the house. I and mean, essentially that's what it boils down to. I believe I even asked like typically how long it takes to get my dream bag. My essay's response was very generic, like something along the lines of, yeah, that just depends on uh, the uh, supply and demand and they are pretty rare and that, you know, um, usually is anywhere between six months to a year, like something like that, I believe. And I'm like, oh, it's six months, right? It's like, yeah, but six months is very rare. Like usually it's every year you get a chance to get an offer. More recent years, 
because almendra has grown so much in popularity that um, the average wait is between a year and two. So the, the wait can be a lot longer also depending on which combination of bag you want because if you're very specific with your colorway and the hardware and the size, then it narrows down the availability, right? Because it's going to be that much harder for them to find that perfect bag for you. And it really depends on also how many other people are asking for the same combinations. Going back to what I said earlier to a previous question where I said how it's so competitive in Canada and Vancouver, which is why you would sometimes hear different stories from other YouTubers that they didn't have to pre-spend and all those things, which is great for them, but it's not the case here. I also want to add that this is not just pertaining to Hermes because I think this is more of a known sort of behind the scenes um, what you have to do in order to achieve these bags but many many luxury brands nowadays including LV and Chanel are doing the same thing but they're just not telling it to your face. But essentially it boils down to just being myself um, to answer your question how did I stand out? I, I was just I was just a nice customer that's how I stand out and I'm sure there's a lot of nice customers too so I'm not the only one if I was an essay I would prioritize all my nice clients first you know what I mean like it is what it is T Cabez 129 I haven't been in Hermes store for six months and want to go back but I feel guilty what could I tell my essay because I haven't seen um, I haven't been in six months as oh as you were going through a divorce so you life happened so don't feel guilty <laughs> for not visiting your store it is totally reasonable and possible to take a hiatus break from anything in life just because you can't always be shopping like I said that I visited my store on average at least once a month, but that doesn't mean that I will be doing that for the rest of my life. For now, I think that makes sense because I'm still early on my journey and I'm still working on my third quarter bag, but life happens and if you can't go for whatever reason, personal or otherwise, it's totally understandable when you reach out to your essay, let's say you have a wish list for some shoes or whatever, tell your essay that you would like to visit the store and buy those things anyway basically what i'm trying to tell you is that uh don't feel guilty it's totally fine to take a break even if it was a whole year long it's totally fine because you were going through some personal issues and whether you have to bring it up to your essay or not is really up to you you don't even have to my point is if you feel like you wanted to explain yourself because you feel guilty then just say that you were going through some personal stuff and that is it like you don't have to uh, you don't have to make it a thing at all um, if you don't even want to but I was just suggesting that if you feel guilty you could but otherwise don't feel guilty just go back and just set yourself an appointment for um, a little shopping spree and just um, go from there the next question is by I see you there oh <laughs> Um, do you still recommend buying Chanel Gabrielle crossbody bag in medium size? I want to buy it. So here's a little eye candy. This is my Gabrielle Chanel handbag in the, the small size, sometimes also referred as the mini, but basically it is the small size and the size medium is basically the size up from this, which is significantly bigger. Um, Here's what I'll say to, you know, anytime you guys ask me for my opinion, whether you should buy something or not, go for it. If you love, if you, if it's your dream bag or if it's just part of your wish list, your next endeavor and you can afford it and you've worked hard, reward yourself, go for it. Especially if you want it, just go for it. But obviously buy responsibly as in like, you know, buy it when you can afford it. That is a given. Um, here's what else here's what I'll say about the Gabrielle as well is that unfortunately it is a design that has sort of like you know not passe per se but like it is a design that is less popular now it is a design that was super super hot and popular at the time and it became a classic of sort or permanent I, sh I should say permanent not classic and that um, a lot of people including me still love it so for me it's part of my collection and part of my sort of like 
rotation. Um, obviously, I don't use this as often as I did when I first got it, but that doesn't mean that I love it any less. But, you know, I'm kind of into my new bags right now. I'm having a honeymoon phase with my newest bags, which earlier I was just using this um, while I was shopping. The point is that if you love something, you should just get it or work hard at getting it because there's a reason why you love it. Just know and just be aware that the Gabrielle is less popular now. Therefore, it is possible to find it pre-loved at a much lower retail price and also do not expect to be able to resell it at a high value just because it is not as popular anymore. Therefore, if those things, those intangible factors are important to you, then you should think twice, I suppose. In general, I wouldn't tell you what you should or shouldn't do just because at the end of the day, the final decision is always yours. You always have your reasons for what you do. But coming from a handbags collections perspective, if you love the style and you see value in it, as part of your collection, that is what's most important. If you love it, if you're gonna enjoy it, that's what's most important. What are your thoughts on the Chanel Mini 22? <laughs> that's a good question. I have a love and hate relationship with the 22 bag, as you all know, and if you don't know, I'm gonna link to my series of 22 bag videos where I bought it for my birthday last year. I loved it so much, but then issues started happening. Now, do I love the bag? Yes, I loved the bag so much. It was so easy to use. It was a large bag without feeling it was too bulky. It was cool. It was all of those things. It was very Chanel, but there were issues, especially with the first batches of the 22 bag. So, there is a love-hate relationship from my point of view. Um, with the mini size, I had the small size. So with the mini size, when I saw it on a runway, I initially thought that it was going to solve every problem that it had before because the problem where the, the size, where the chain rubs, is gonna be minimal because the crossbody chain actually goes from inside the bag. So it's not gonna wear from where the drawstring part is. Initially, I thought problem solved. This is the answer to the 22 bag. This is the one that I'm gonna get. And <laughs> that's gonna be my replacement. I still think it can be the case. However, they had a big price increase. Who knows when the next one is going to be. The mini ended up being more expensive than the small size that I bought initially. So there was a little part of me that thought, oh, is it still, is it good value for what I'm getting? Because it's a smaller bag. Yes, it's a little different because it has more chains and it's crossbody and it's cuter. But at the same time, it's still a very rudimentary design. You know what? I think it probably fits about the same amount as this. Whereas this one has quite a bit of bulk. It's very structured, so it's it's a bit more sort of clunky in a way, if you know what I mean. Whereas the Mini 22 has its own vibe too. Like it has that more careless, <laughs> careless vibe, which to me is so appealing at the same time. So I love it, but I hate it at the same time. I hate it because obviously the prices increase. I also hate it because it's a lot less construction wise it's so much more simple for the price that it is now which is so so high and it's only going higher so i'm so i'm having a bit of a personal struggle with it i do want it but every time i ask for it it's never available either so they are still very popular nonetheless and therefore I don't want to just end up buying any any color, any random color. I want a neutral color. I want a classic color. Um, just because I know in the long term, that's what I will end up using more. And I know it will be more long lasting in my collection. So it's more for practical reasons that I go for the neutral colors. Uh, but at the same time, I know if I delay it further, the longer I can't get my hands on it, the more chances I'll have to pay more for it for something so much smaller. I'm not saying no to it, but I obviously haven't had the opportunity to do so. And something always came up, either it was not available. So we'll see. We'll see if I end up getting one in the future. I, I definitely still want it, but it is getting to a point where it is getting 
a little too crazy price wise and i have a lot more other things that i also want to get so it comes down to it comes down to whether it's meant to be i suppose okay trying to finish the q a really quickly because my mom's saying that i have to go eat dinner uh katie 1290 does the color gold always come with contrast stitching i think so again i'm not an expert at almez i just have experience buying almez for the last you know two plus almost three years um as far as i know and as far as my bags and as far as i've seen gold bags do come with contrast stitching now do they make any exceptions anywhere else i don't know maybe with different leathers I mean the the leather type not the color just so that you guys can have a visual contrast stitch means that the stitching color the the stitching of the thread is not the same color as the bag so that's what it means uh, so this is my Della Cavalleria bag from Almaz this is not a quota bag but nonetheless it's a very cute bag I think it came out in 2018 um, yeah so you see the contrast stitching right there all over the bag and also fun fact about contrast stitching is that they usually reserve bags that have contrast stitching so this color as well as this color which is a tube also has um i should say more french huh because i am a french speaker so a tube gold uh these two colors which are part of their classic colors do come in contrast stitching in order to make a bag with contrast stitching because if you do mess up a bag with contrast stitching you're really going to see it since you really see the difference between the bag itself the leather and the stitch so they usually reserve these more difficult um bags to make for a more experienced crafter or artisan whereas if it was black if they made a little one little crooked stitch is not going to be as visible so they might leave those to more beginners beginners artisan nonetheless they're all handmade beautiful and everything a little imperfection is not totally uncommon um, but i think yeah contrast stitching is a little harder to make in the sense that you have to be super paying attention super careful perfectionist all that stuff all that good stuff the katie danger do you see yourself letting go of more handbags in the future good question and the answer is probably yeah because um it only makes sense as i get further into my elmez journey as i get more into the you know all the spending all the pre-spending and getting these expensive bags that i will find my favorites within my collection um however having said that i do know that my chanel collection there is still a core there's a core in in the chanel collection where i will also forever keep like i don't see myself getting rid of any of my mini flaps my classic flap the only one that i have for sure i'm not getting rid for sure i'm not getting rid of that one no matter how often i use it but i do know that eventually i will have to let go of some things uh just to make space for newer things um prob at this point i at this point there aren't that many in my collection i want to say it's the same ones that i mentioned in the previous q a so mm, Possibly my LV Nano Speedy, which I hardly used, even though I kind of bought it as part of my collection. I have a love-hate relationship with my Coco handles, so possibly that. My extra mini and possibly, possibly, possibly the Chanel bucket bag, just because I do prefer using my Hermes bucket bag, the one in exotic handle a little bit more, even though it doesn't have a strap, but I just like the look of it. I like the simplicity of it, so as far as i know at this moment those are the ones that are in a future future chopping block but yeah definitely my i think my collection will still evolve a little bit and, and be you know kind of changing a little bit but just not super drastically and um there's not a lot of room to move at this point either lizzie c when are you heading to paris i don't know i wish i knew as i mentioned earlier as well in a previous q a usually with some of these trips not usually but some with some of the trips that i end up doing uh taking in the past we kind of plan it sort of like ad hoc 
play by year type of thing. So sometimes we we just think of somewhere we want to go and we plan it. We go within a few weeks. So at this time of year, we don't have a concrete plan of going back to Paris or to visit. But if we do, I'll for sure let you guys know because I'd love to meet some of you and, you know, I need recommendations for cool places to go. But I don't know for sure at this moment. I don't know yet. Um, and speaking of, when is the best time to go to Paris? Please let me know so I can, you know, keep that in mind. And that way, um, maybe I'll just be like an impromptu trip again. And last but not least from Mama Chris, her question is, what will be the bags and shoes that you will wear this summer? I want to wear all my Hermes bags throughout the summer just because I have I have been having a honeymoon phase with all my Hermes bags. I also want to wear my beautiful classic flap in the gray color. Like basically all the light color bags in my collection, I want to make a lot of use out of them. Summertime is basically when I use my light color bags the most. So Lady Dior, uh, classic flap in light gray. In terms of shoes, the most obvious ones are all my sandals, all of my sheep sandals from Hermes. My loafers, those are probably the ones that I wear the most in uh, the summertime. Um, and of course, depending on the occasion, if I have like a nice event to go to, I'll be wearing some heels. I do rotate a lot of my stuff, so I do end up wearing a lot of them throughout the year, not just in the summer, but especially in the summertime, definitely more lighter colors and definitely all the shoes where I can slip in without socks. Those are the ones that I tend to go for. Thank you so much for all the questions that you had. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm going to be collecting all the questions, especially for future Q&As. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I also have a weekly live stream and a membership that you can join for more exclusive content. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys in the comment section. Bye.